So now we can get into the real reason we're here, the fun stuff. So we can actually start adding notifications that we want to be sent. And then after this, we'll actually go and do the Firebase Functions part where we send the notification. So really quick, I'm just going to create a very simple form here. So where the user can input what it is that they want to actually send as a notification. And I'm just going to give it an ID of send oops, notification form. Then I'm going to add a label um, that will be for the notification message. And I'm going to add this screen reader only class because I don't actually want it to be displayed. And that's something I have in my CSS, the notification message. Then let's add a text area. Uh, let's just remove all of this stuff for now. Notification message. What would you like to say? And I'm going to set max length to 40 characters because that's the amount of characters that will show comfortably on a notification, which we will see later. Um, let's add a button, which will submit. So let's just add the type submit so we're being really clear about it. Man, I am doing nonsense. <laughs> And then let's actually you know, let's add a label using aria label with the send because I'm actually just going to use an image for the button text. Um, actually, we need to add a div around this, and this is just because of the way I wrote my CSS. We need like a container around both of these things. So hopefully this should work. Let's just check. Okay, cool. So this is kind of what we wanted here. So let me just take this and we just want to check to see when this form is submitted. So as we've done before, send notification form, get element by ID. Then we want to check to see when it's submitted. Submit. Let's say send notification. So now let's go and create this form or this function rather. Function send notification. So in this send notification form, what we want to do is get the text that the user has inputted that they want to send us the not notification. Then what we want to do is send it to our Firebase database under like a different node, we'll call it notifications. And then with our function, we'll check to see whenever something has been added to that and then send the notification. So for right now, all we're doing is sending the notification. I'm just going to start by preventing the form being actually like submitted. Then I'm going to get the notification message. ID. I think it was called that. Let's just make sure. Yeah, notification message. Cool. And then just the um, value of that. So if we go up to where we are saving something else, let's look at this. You can basically just copy this format here. So, oops. So instead of to notifications, we um, to tokens rather, we want to send to something called notifications. And instead of pushing this, we want to push two different things. So first of all, we want the user, so the user's name. And we can get this by, we can go, just copying and pasting things really here. So Firebase auth current user, and there's actually a um, value, let's just go here and see what it is. It's called display name, yeah. So we just wanna get the user's display name. Then we want the actual message that they're sending, which is this notification message that we have here and a third thing that we want to pass is the user's profile picture because that's what we want to show on the notification because as you probably know notifications have like a small icon there so we want to put the user's profile picture you can actually get that here i think there's something called yeah photo url so let's call this um 
user profile image. And then let's just copy this part. And that's that. So maybe after that, let's just clear the um, current notification. So let's just copy this and just say value equals to nothing, just so there's some sort of feedback that something has happened. So let's go back and test this out. So let's refresh the page and say, hello there. Very imaginative, I know. So let's do that. Um, the page refreshed, which makes me think my prevent default thing didn't work. But let's just go and check to see if it's there. So it's not. Let's quickly check to see what has happened. Oh, I didn't actually add an event there, which is really, really smart of me. Okay, so let's go back, refresh the page. And this is a test. And let's send this. And this appeared to have worked because that cleared. So let's go and check. And yay, we have notifications. So now we can see here, you can see the message I sent. It's being sent from this user and then we have the profile image here. So we're pretty much done with the client side of this application. We've created a user and we've allowed users to create the notifications. So what we're gonna just do now is just deploy the application so we can see it's live. And we can also have like another user to be testing with. And then we can get to the really, really fun part, which is the Firebase functions. So to deploy the application, I'm just going to create a separate terminal window here. Well, all we have to do is type in Firebase deploy if we want to deploy like absolutely everything. And as we know, we have like the database and then we also have the functions and the hosting. But all we've really done now is with hosting, so I'm just going to deploy only that part. So I'm going to press Firebase deploy minus minus only, and then I can just specify what I want to deploy. So let's just do that. Oh, I've just deployed my application, and it says like we've hosted 3,167 files. And that's because I neglected to do one thing, which is if you go to your Firebase.json, actually specify things that we want to ignore. Since our public directory is the root directory, pretty much everything here is being uploaded and we don't actually want that. So what we can do is just specify an array of files that we don't want to be included in the upload for the hosting. So I'm just gonna quickly add, we don't want our database.rules.json. We also don't want the functions folder, which is what is really causing the issue here because we also have a node modules folder in there. And we definitely don't want that to be uploaded as part of our hosting. And we can also say we don't want the Firebase.json file itself to be uploaded. So I'm just going to try and do that again, just to make sure we're not deploying everything in this entire directory. So this time it went much more quickly, and we only uploaded 73 files. Which I can't figure out exactly what those 73 files are, but at least it's not like 3,000 files. Okay, so now we have the URL for our application here. And I'm just going to copy this, and I'm going to go in a completely different browser. Go to our application, we can see it's there. Um, so one more thing I forgot to do was to actually hide this form unless the user is signed in. And I'll just leave that for you to do. So let's click sign in. So now I can click subscribe, allow notifications, thank you. Then I'm going to say hello world, which is very imaginative. And that appeared to have worked. So let's go back to our database. And we can see here that we have a second token, which is awesome. So it's like different from the other one. So I'm using a different browser, different user. And you can see that I also added a different um, notification so we can have that right here even though they're both the same name because we both need 